Hey everybody, how you doing? This is about to be a really fun video. I know tons of you guys are excited because today we are talking about 4570. Look at that big old blue light. I'm super excited and we're going to cut straight to the chase. Today we're talking about Remington 4570, the 405 grain soft point core lock. These bad boys right here, 405 grains of 4570. We're gonna be slinging them out of my Marlin model 1895. This is the older model one. I've had this thing ooh, three years or so, but this is what we're slinging it out of. Awesome, awesome lever action. Some people do not like the optic on the 4570, but let me tell you, the optic makes you get better groups and anything that helps me get better groups, I'm all for it. So I got an LPVO on this baby. I've taken a deer with this. If you want to see that video, go check it out. It's up on the channel. A monster buck at that with this exact setup right here. But like I said, we got to cut straight to the chase because what are we doing with this stuff? We're going to group test it at a hundred yards today. I'm going to do my best to try to catch some in some ballistics gel. This is the slower loading. This is the 1330 feet per second loading. And generally speaking, these are some really good penetrators. So it may be hard to catch in ballistics gel, but we're sure going to try. What else are we going to do? We're going to run it over the chronograph and see what kind of readings we get. This barrel... My tape measure says it's a 22-inch barrel. They've also made them in 19-inch barrels and 24-inch barrels. Some other people make 4570 with longer barrels, but we're going to run this one over the chronograph, which my tape measure says is a 22-inch barrel. But let's hit the range. First thing we're going to do, group test it, see what kind of groups I can get with this stuff at 100 yards. Should be pretty cool. Check it out. Out at the range here now at Heavy Metal. We got the Marlin 1895. Let's go ahead and load up three and do a three shot group here and see where it's at. We'll get it sighted in with this Remington stuff. Dude, it's been a minute since I've fooled with a lever action. I know some of y'all are big fans, but like I said, we got a one to eight power zoomies. Already got eight zoomies on here. Let's see what we can do here. I'm going to need to get something to prop this up. We're already at the max height of this thing. Alright, so we're up and to the right a little bit. A little bit heavier trigger than I've been used to here lately too. Let's go ahead and do two more here. Not too bad. I'd be extremely happy if I can get a one inch group with 4570, but I'd say probably one and a half under two inches, most 4570 slingers would probably be happy with something like that. Then the third one. All right, all three of those good squeezes will measure the groups at the end of the video with some calipers, but right now I'm calling that about a 1.4 inch group. So. <laughs> I'd call that in the good for 4570, but let me go ahead and get this thing sighted in for this stuff. Make sure you stay for the end of the video because we're going to try to catch one of these in some ballistic shell. That's always a good time. But we need to come down and we need to come to the right. Those clickies ought to get us real close to where we need to be. Let me go ahead and load up three more. Why not close the box? They load up three more and we'll see where we're sitting now. Ought to be real close to bullseye. Pretty close to bullseye. I'd say our adjustment was pretty good there. We'll see how this group turns out. That put them in the same hole. I'm happy with that. Real happy. Definitely a heavier trigger than what we're used to on a lot of the bolt action stuff. Good squeeze there. Yeah, I think we just made the record for me and this 1895 
not bad for 4570 out of 100 yards. How hot is this? That's not hot at all. I said most 4570 slingers would be happy under a one inch group and I'm pretty sure we just did that. Let me load up three more while we're out here. Oh, we're dead on money now. Two more. That one, the rest jumped a little bit, but still not too terrible. Put it in there. That's probably one inch group or a shade higher, but I'm going to measure all three of those three shot groups at the end of this video when we got the calipers. But let's run up there and see if we can catch one of these in some ballistics gel. All right, now I got some ballistics gel set up on the table. Yeah, it's used. The front one's completely brown and the second one's used. I need to melt it down. Perfect world, I'd be a bazillionaire and half a bunch of gel. But in reality, that stuff's kind of expensive. But anyways, we're still going to try to catch one of these 4570s. Hopefully it stops in the second clear block. But if not, I've got some random water jugs behind it. Let's see if we can get it. I'm at like 10 yards or so. Because of my scope over bore here, I'm going to need to hold high or low. I'm going to need to hold a little high. So I'm aiming for the top half. Cross your fingers and all your toes that we catch this 4570 405 grainer. Let's see what happens. Aim a little bit high here. You crouch about like this. Well, we don't need eight zoom hits for 10 yards. But let's see if we can catch it. Ooh. I believe it went through all of the jugs, or all of the gel rather, and through the water jugs in the back. Hmm. So, if we come up to the front here, we got a pretty dead center hit there. And you can actually see, even though this is brown, you can see a pretty good channel through there. I don't know how good it's going to show up on camera, but there's a channel right down the center. Then we hit center in the second block there, right there. And went all the way out the back. And went through this jug, you can see. And then went through the second one here. And there's absolutely nothing in it. So here's, I've got three left. One, two, three. And I'm going to line them up straight exactly the same way. If things happen like they did last time, we'll have three here to catch them. And if not, well then we'll just know that it goes through two blocks and three jugs and then some. But let's try and see if that extra one is enough. This last one, it looks like it was losing a lot of speed there so maybe we'll get lucky and catch it here but man so far it went through that full block that full block and two jugs and kept on going let's see if jug number three is enough to catch it this time let's try one more time all right here we go y'all second attempt on catching it in the gel slash jugs cross all your fingers and your toes again it worked last time as far as keeping us straight but like i said 4570 especially in that speed that 1300 extremely good penetrator but it'd be cool to catch it wouldn't it let's uh see if we can catch it this time same thing we did last time hmm. i think we got a pretty good straight one again but uh looks like our last one's leaking again let's go see what happened all right, so what do we do? This time we hit a shade higher, right there. You can definitely see the path. And then it went in there, stayed in the gel the whole time. You can see there's hardly any turbulence in this and it's just straight zinging. And went through one, two, three again. Now, here's what we'll do. Since that one was high, I'm going to give it one more try and just see if I can go lower since these still are half full of water. I'm going to try to get a hit in the lower half of here while we're out here and got all this set up. really want to catch this thing. 
All right, third try to catch one of these. This time I've enlisted a little bit of help. In between those two gel blocks, I picked up some random AR, M-O-R, and we're gonna see if that helps us catch this baby. I think it should. I'm pretty sure it will. If it don't catch it, then it's gonna fling somewhere and we just won't find it, but we'll see what happens. A little bit lower. Well, things moved and jiggled around. I actually think I see something laying on the table, so let's go check that out. I think we, uh, think we might have got it this time. Y'all are going to have to tell me what happened right there, because, let me show you. Haven't touched anything. That is what I saw laying on the table. This little piece of whatever that is. That is definitely not what we were trying to catch. And... We, uh, we got another hit right there at about the same spot as the first one, and this jumped up here, so, and there's no hole in it, so I'm thinking we ought to have caught it right there, and look at that. There's our 4570 right there. Well, definitely some good stuff right here, and it's hot, so goal accomplished. Now we just got to get that out of here. Let me see if I can dig this out. I'm going to need two hands for that. Hold on. All right, so I actually had to dig that stuff out. Well, let me show you here. Pretty wild here, if I can get my tripod working. Look at that. Now, the lead separated there, but look at how wide that is. Definitely gonna measure this with the calipers too when I measure those groups here at the end of the video. Look at that. Talk about a hunk of lead. That, like, grew by probably over a hundred percent 45 caliber up to probably a one inch caliber pretty pretty wild but definitely gonna measure this too let me measure run back to the house quick and i'll measure the groups on that target and i'll also measure this with the calipers all right now i was so excited to check the groups and to catch one of these babies i forgot i brought out my crony crab so Let's see if we can get some speeds. What did the box say? 1300 some odd. Let's see how fast these are hanging out of the Marlin 1895. Some of y'all might have a, a 4570 with a little bit longer barrel, but we're just going to see what this one reads and hope I don't hit that crony. Or my camera for that matter. 1162. So. Pretty, pretty cool. This one would be sweet with one of those shisher cans on it, probably. But let's run to the house, get the calipers on that caught blue lot that was huge, and also those groups. Probably the best group I've ever gotten with 4570. All right, guys, back at the house. Did I mention I love 4570? But I said I was going to measure this. Big old crazy boo lot that we caught and the uh, put the calipers on those groups. Super excited about what I just measured on those groups. They're even tighter than I thought they'd be. So we did three groups at 100 yards. I open her up here. Got my calipers out. The way that I measure the groups is the outside to the outside of the furthest two and then subtract the bow lot. So in this case, 4570, we'd be subtracted 45. So measuring the outside to outside minus 45, that's a 1.22 inch group. This is the group before I adjusted the scope, so sighted in with something else. 1.22 inch group, like I was saying in the video, 1.22 inch group, I think just about anybody who's a 4570 fan would call that acceptable with 4570, but I adjusted the scope, got it dialed in for this stuff, and we did even better. What did we do on the next one? To my recollection, that is the best group I have ever got with 4570. So that 1895 is gonna stay sighted in with that Remington 405 grain stuff because it obviously likes it. So next time we need to chase a deer or something else with it, it's going to be sighted in with this 0.55 inch group with 4570 at 100 yards. 
I love it. I'd call that incredible for 4570, especially with the lever action and that heavier trigger. Then we did it again. We got two in the same hole just about, but including this one, we had a 1.13 inch group. So two groups under an inch and a half, I call that good, or three really. And then another 0.55 inch group with three boulots slung. Hey, that's cooking with gas right there. I absolutely love it. 0.55 inches. And then I said I was gonna put the calipers on this lead right here. Woo! Remember, it starts as a 45. You can see the back. That might give you a guess on what you might think it is. So the, that back part there this in the center is 45 caliber, but how much did that expand? Well, I wrote it on that piece of paper that I just threw on the floor. It expanded to over an inch to how big? At its widest point, 1.12 inches across. So how incredible is this? That's got some stopping power right there, doesn't it? And pretty wild, the penetrating power of this stuff Generally speaking, the slow rounds and the heavy rounds, so the slow and heavy rounds, are great penetrators. And we saw it in that ballistics gel. It went through all that stuff and the water behind it. Most things, like a 308, 30 out 6, 270, will get caught in those two ballistics gel every single time. The speed makes them deform faster, and they, which means they lose the energy faster, but... This slower one kept on trucking where we actually had to use that plate to catch this baby. But expanded from 45 to 1.12 inches. Pretty awesome. But hey, appreciate y'all watching. Comment down below if you love 4570. Let me know what your 4570 is. Tell me a story about you and your 4570. Always love hearing the stories. But there you have it, guys. My 1895. Hey. It loves the Remington 405 Grainers with that 1330 foot per second loading. 0.55 inch group at 100 yards. You just about can't get any better than that. But hey, appreciate y'all watching. We'll see you on the next one. Shoot.